Out of all the chaos and violence that's emerged in the aftermath of Katrina, there's perhaps nothing more disturbing than what happened in the neighborhood of Algiers Point. Just days after Katrina hit and law and order began to break down, bands of white militias riding pickup trucks and carrying shotguns began to patrol the streets, using deadly force against blacks when they deemed it necessary. Members claimed they were carrying out vigilante justice in order to protect the streets from looters. But according to a joint investigation by the nation and pro publica, at least 11 African Americans were shot by whites in Algiers in the days and weeks following Katrina. All the while, NOLA police turned a blind eye to the violence. Take a listen to what a member of one of the militias said about the experience. I never thought 11 and a half months ago I'd be walking down the streets of New Orleans with two 38s in my pocket and a shotgun over my shoulder. It was great! It was like pheasant season in South Dakota. And just last week, Cam Edwards, host of the NRA's news show, praised the actions of the militias during Katrina, saying that Algiers residents were, quote, looking out for each other by walking the streets with firearms. This rewriting of history means to th that to this day, there's been absolutely no justice for the victims of these gangs. While in New Orleans, I sat down with two men who took up arms themselves for protection against the militias. Malik Rahim is a former Black Panther member, and Scott Crow is one of the most notable anarchists in America today. Both men joined up to found Common Ground Collective in the days after Katrina, one of the largest grassroots organizations to provide vital social and medical services to fill the void left by government. Over the first four years of existence, Common Ground did everything from building health clinics to setting up housing for thousands of displaced residents. In the four years after Katrina, Common Ground served over 200,000 people and to this day serves as a model for disaster response from Indonesia to New York. I started the interview by asking Malik if he was prepared for the aftermath of Katrina. Absolutely nothing in my life prepared me to the aftermath of Katrina. Uh, the first two days was was normal, and then that Wednesday, you know, when when people seeing that there was no hope, when they seeing that the state and the city and the federal government wasn't planning on doing anything, when the horror stories from the convention center. Uh, start leaking out, then that's when the whole dynamics shift. That's when Katrina shifted from being a disaster to a tragedy. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this area here, we had a white militia that took up arms, and uh, you had to pass a paper bag test. If you was darker than a paper bag, you couldn't come through Algiers Point. You know, they had blocked off all the streets. <clears throat> firemen stopped being firemen and started being guards. You know, uh, one minute you was doing rescue work with police, and the next minute they was pulling guns on you. Talk about the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, the first 72 hours. What was that experience like for you, and what did you see? The white militia here was gathering, was gathering ground. And you have to understand, they look like the Klan without the hats. They were driving around in the back of trucks, drunk, with guns pointed at black people. Not anybody else. Drawing guns on them and shooting people. And, you know, when I first got here, the first thing that we did was we, we covered up this body, this bullet-riddled body over here that you could smell for two blocks coming over there. There's another dead body over here that was bullet-riddled. Now, we'd already seen drowned people, but now we're seeing bullet-riddled. So who killed them? Was it the police or was it the, the militia? And so at the time, we didn't know which one it was because both of them were out of control. New Orleans police, long history of systemic racism, a systemic uh, out of control police system. So basically when I came, I came to take up arms in a community that I was invited into by, with other, other people from this community, black people from this community, two white guys and three black guys from, the communi from this community took up arms to defend ourselves, defend the community against being killed by the militia. They were threatening Malik. They were driving by, pointing their guns at him, saying they were gonna get you, mayor. 
I don't even know if you remembered that. Mm -hmm. They were drawing their guns, out. And, and so we were basically like, we, we were like, you're not going to do that. And then, the, and then the, the police drew guns on us constantly. This is something that you know, people in this communi these communities have to go through every day, but it was happening to, to white people who didn't live here. And, um, and they kept saying that we were going to overtake. So this is the situation. But they weren't doing anything to help people. They wanted to restore law and order. They did not want to, you know, you have to understand that there's like people trapped in their attics. There's people trapped on their rooftops. We're not talking about like a few hundred people. We're talking tens of thousands of people are going to die. And all they want to do is restore law and order. And they're, they're turning a blind eye to the militia in this neighborhood. So we started to ask the people in the neighborhood. And we started, they said, can you get the rotted meat out of here? Can you take the, can you get the dead dogs out of here? Can you stop the militia from can we get some medical services and so from that this beautiful thing started to emerge so we took this incredibly historic terrible situation and tried to turn it around because what there was was there a crack in history that opened where the, where the where power had lost all its control and and a space opened for the people from us from below to come and actually try to do something well scott how do you feel when you hear organizations like the nra actually praising the algiers militia it was infuriating I mean, these guys, I was in an armed standoff with them. And I was thinking, and I'd always, I'd always been like, well, maybe I should have pulled the trigger. And then I would have like, I would have killed these people and I would have gone to prison and like all these bad things would have happened, would have stopped them from killing other people. But then when I hear the NRA praising them today, like at my, in the ninth anniversary, I'm like, what's wrong with you? These men, these men and women were killing people and bragging about it. They were treating them, like Malik was saying, as other, as anybody who was desperate was other, and treated like dogs or less than dogs and like they should be killed. They called it pheasant season, shooting mm -hmm. black youth. They were like, it's pheasant season. And, and I'm, I'm sorry I'm so angry about it, but it's, it's infuriating. It's not just, and it's not just the police. This is the systemic part of this. Malik, why do you think the government failed so abysmally to react and provide adequate relief in the aftermath? If to give the government too much credit by saying they failed. Because if you say that you failed at something, that means that you tried. You never yeah. tried. Damn right. Yeah. So you knew it from the get go. You know, that uh, right. we had a ship to run across this levee here. And it didn't break. Why? Because this levee protected whites. It protected the U.S. Uh, naval base that was here. So an ocean freighter could run across this levee, and it, won't, and it didn't break. I'm going to tell you something. Long before Hurricane Katrina, New Orleans had already been inundated. Hurricane despair, hurricane poverty, mm -hmm. did, hurricane racism, mm -hmm. they had already inundated this area. So, you know, the uh, only thing that uh, Katrina really did is kind of expose it. And because that no one cared is the reason why we're facing the ramification of it now. Mm -hmm. Because those little nine-year-old kids and them little 16-year-old kids that was in the convention center that you showed no love or compassion to is now 16, 18, 20 years old with a gun and have no... Uh, no love in their heart because there wasn't no trauma counselors. The first high school that was open in the aftermath of Katrina for poor blacks was had up to 75 kids in one classroom. It had more guards than uh, teachers. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not no uh, 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 accident that Chicago and New Orleans have such high uh, murder rates. Look what we did in both cities. We destroyed all the public housing without giving no economic opportunity to no one. Mm -hmm. So the, who, who was the, the equal opportunity employer? The drug dealers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then we put them in jail where we transformed dogs into wolves. Mm -hmm. Wolves run in packs mm -hmm. and they kill in packs. Mm -hmm. Scott, talk about Common Ground. What type of services did the organization provide and how many volunteers came through and worked with the group? 
at one point we had seven clinics running, right? We also had how many? Just nine distribution centers. Um, we were working with the First Nations communities all along the Gulf Coast. We we're working in the Vietnamese communities. The um, there was like fishing communities, uh, the Creole communities, and these all these rural areas where nobody was at, as well as what we were doing in New Orleans. And the thing is, Common Ground operated as an organization, but also as a network. So we were also spinning off organizations as we were going. And um, we had mobile clinics going. We had a bicycle repair shop, which is uh, which just spun off. Uh, we started a women's uh, center uh, that uh, still exists today. Um, there's, there was the rebuilding, co-op. we did worker cooperatives. Um, there's a number of projects. Any, any given week, there could be 2,000 people on the ground from around here and coming from around the country working on 150 projects or programs at, at any time between 2005 and 2008. And people were willing to do whatever it took to make it happen for people that didn't even know. And then those people who were, had a leg up, were, you know, they were just trying to build their self-determination for their community. And I think that's an amazing thing because disasters reveal more than anything and the failures of capitalism and governments. Malik, what lessons can we all learn from Katrina? We make America a great nation is its people, its ability to come out and help those in time of need. The greatest effort of Common Ground wasn't the work that it did. It was who did the work, that you had over 20,000 whites to come down into black communities, communities that's right now uh, is still classified as being some of the most dangerous communities in this city that didn't listen to what the uh, media was portraying, that came down here and they didn't find no thugs. They find God-fearing people, hard-working people that just by circumstance and condition happen to be poor. Damn right. That's what they found. And then at the same time that they was dispelling that myth among us blacks, we was, it was another myth that was being dispelled. That, that was the myth that all whites was evil. All whites was oppressive. Only thing whites wanted to do to blacks is to either oppress them or exploit them. They came down here and they saw this. It was more than just a relief organization. Common Ground came here and, and brought hope to an area that had lost hope. It brought justice to an area that has thrived and only lived in injustice. It brought opportunity to a community that we only see in despair. But I think that, that Common Ground in, the, in the, the beginning of the 20th century here, the 21st century here, is the, was a, a, a time that people can now look at and go like, this is what people can do when disasters happen. Now, as climate change becomes more real and disasters happen much more, economic disasters continue to happen, the failures of capitalism, I think that people, come, things like Common Ground and Occupy, Occupy Sandy, things like that, become this place that people can look at as a reference point to go like, what can I do in my community? Wait, we can do this together? We don't need the government to do this? Oh, we don't need the corporations to lie to us? And we can do that? Those are the legacies that I'm the proudest of. That's our show, you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to join me tomorrow when I break the set all over again.